Of course, I played for the Titans and played against the Carolina Panthers on the Bucks, so I'm still in grass mode with them. Let alone, I, I kind of live in grass mode yeah, all I, the I know time. You know mode. what I, I mean. Wink, mode. wink. <laughs> Very subtle. Or as some would say, subtle. And that was what Chris said after that. That was last week's PFTPM Chris Sims Unbuttoned Joint Mega Picks podcast. It is week 12. We have already done the Thanksgiving picks. If you miss them, you can find them separately. If Thanksgiving has come and gone and you want to see whether we were right or wrong, you can go back and listen to that and hear our analysis and judge for yourself whether we knew what we were talking about or whether we were full of caca. Speaking of caca, here's Chris Sims. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you as well. <laughs> Hi. Hey, you know what? Old business. Old business. Look what I got. Look what I got. Whoa! Right from last week. What the hell did you call I this thing? It. What the hell is that called? It's a recorder. A recorder. It's a recorder. Right. I know. And it's not carved out of wood. It is high quality plastic. Uh, and uh, it was nine ninety nine on Amazon. Amazon is great, and Amazon is horrible because you know, like they put candy in magazines as you're checking out at the grocery store because they want you to make impulse buys. Having Amazon transforms everything you could purchase. So that's into an what you did. Buy. You talked about it, and then you impulsively went on Amazon and bought it. You just had to buy it I to went, look at I it. Went, All right. Well, one. hey, I had to buy one. Put your money where I your mouth is. One. Let me hear some notes. You can't bring an instrument right, on go. and not play anything. What the hell? Let's Are we go. Ready? Yeah, we're ready. I've been working on. I haven't been able to practice as much as I'd like to. And the problem is, I've learned you've got to have the right amount of air yes. into the the nozzle. Right. Uh. Remember, I said the, the song Windy, and I sent you a clip of the song Windy to refresh your memory. There's a scene in Breaking Bad where they play Windy by the association from the 60s. So I am going, I'm going to tell you ahead of time this is going to be horrible because I'm not going to be able to have the right amount of air. You have to get, you have to hit, there's a sweet spot. But this is Windy by the association, which I learned back in 1974 in grade school when they forced us to play this damn thing. Here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm not, but here we go. <laughs> See, I already screwed it up. Wow. Wow. That yes. was, whoa. Wow. I'm impressed. I am impressed. You obviously are not writing enough articles on PFT lately. The fact that you have that much time to practice that shit, okay, and buy it and all that. You, you need, I you, practiced. <laughs> I'm, I guarantee you. I guarantee uh, you can ask my wife because my dog hates it. That's one thing I learned. <laughs> yeah. My dog hates this thing. I have barely practiced. I got lucky. It's that last one. You've got this one. Anybody's ever had to play this thing? When you cover them all up and you get that last note with your pinky at the bottom, it is very hard to get. You just got to get it just right. See, you can't get it. You can't get it. It's impossible. It's impossible to get that note right. Anyway, $9.99. It's a write-off. NBC reimbursed me. $9.99. Cash checker money it's order. A right, off. off we go. <laughs> it's a write-off. And, you know, I should I should have charged it on my business card, really, because I used it as a prop on the show. It's a write off. Now I got a recorder that I don't know what I'm going to do anything with. I'll keep it around in case I ever get drunk and I want to figure out how to play some other song. And there probably is YouTube video out there or something that will teach me other songs. So one day when I'm really bored, I'll learn some other songs. All right. Uh, I was not bored this past weekend because we had three games we disagreed on. We were both heavily invested in the outcome of those games. Brown Steelers. Vikings Broncos, Chiefs Eagles, and you bastard, you swept me. A week after I swept you 4-0, you swept me 3-0. I still have a four-game lead straight up. You've got a three-game lead against the spread. Best bets, we were both 2-1. and one. I've got a little bit of a lead there, yep. but you swept me 3-0. Yeah. I couldn't get one of them, and in all three games, yes. well, maybe not the Steelers-Browns game, but in the two other games, the team that lost outplayed the yeah, team that that's won. The wor that's the worst part about it. And, you know, I feel like I've been on the losing end of a lot of those lately. So it was good to get a few back there that I felt like, you know, the football gods were like, hey, you picked the team a few times that outplayed the other one and lost whatever. So good. Up yours. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. And I want to kick your ass again this week and gain some more ground in, in best bets. And, and uh, you're on fire in best bets. I will say that. But just the regular pick straight up. I, I, no. I, I got to win that one, too. Recently on fire. 
urinating on the fire, as Mike Tomlin would say, is what we've been doing lately. <laughs> lately, we've done great. But for the season, 17, 15, and 1, when those are your well, best plays of well, the week, yeah. that's not good. I don't, that's what I will argue with our producers and all this. I, I'm forced into making three best bets every week where I don't want to. If we just made it one, there's there's two <laughs> games. We've had certain weeks where I'd go, I don't want to pick another one. These, I don't feel good. I just like this one, right? So that sometimes is what, you know, screws us over a little as well. Well, well join the club. I don't want to pick any of them. I just want to watch the games and enjoy the games and not be twisted up worrying about whether or not Let's I'm get to twisted you in our competition. Let's go. So here we go. Black Friday, Dolphins at the Jets. When they made the schedule, it looked good. Now it doesn't because the Jets are not good without Aaron Rodgers. They turned to Tim Boyle. Miami was a seven and a half point favorite before the Tim Boyle news came out. Now they're 10 point favorites with an over under of 41. 83% of the spread money per DraftKings is on Miami. I assume our spread money is going to be on Miami as well. Who do you got? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, Black Friday. I mean, you should have bought your stupid flute thing on Black Friday. You could have got it for eight ninety nine. What were you thinking there? All right? Or recorder, whatever the hell it called. Mini flute. That's but what that looks like. But it would have been like. relevant next week. <laughs> oh. I needed to get my little okay. magic flute, like from HR Puff and stuff. I needed to get my little magic flute to make it relevant because we did it last week. Yeah, well, use it Use it uh, this weekend to so you can puff some stuff. That thing looks like it'll be able to do that. Right? <laughs> you so could, you figure it out. You could, you could pack. <laughs> That's look, right. there you pack go. You just take there. that part off. Yeah. Woo. You pack it here. or yeah. you. Pa I think you pack it right there. Right. I think that's what you do. Oh, man. You'll you have some monster hits right there. Yeah. That'll be great. You'll be stoned <laughs> as hell. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, thinking of, game. <laughs> thinking of uh, speaking of stoned as hell, that's what the Jets offense <laughs> looks like usually. They look like they've all done weed and then they go out and try to play football and it doesn't work out so well. I don't expect anything to change. I know Zach Wilson's not good. We got that. That's understood. The off, the, but the, the quarterback is, you know, only one little part of this whole issue they have all together. Uh, the, the offense, there's not a lot there. I do think this is a Dolphins defense that is continuing to get better and understanding Vic Fangio's scheme and Jalen Ramsey back adds to one more playmaker across the board for them. All right, I don't see the Jets moving the ball very much or consistently, that's for sure. Now, I think the Jets' defense, their speed, the way they rush the passer – Right, they can be a pain in the ass for this Miami Dolphins offense. That I do, you know, they're built just right for this Miami Dolphins offense. I'd be shocked that if Miami just marched the ball up and down the field on them all day. I think Miami wins this game, obviously, and they control it. But it might not be as high flying dominance as maybe we think it'll be. I'm gonna go 24 to 10. Dolphins in this one. I do think it. I do think the Jets' defense will make it hard on the on the Dolphins. Friday, day after Thanksgiving, a little colder air for the Dolphins coming up here in the Northeast. Uh, I think that could lead them to just not being quite as awesome on offense. Intriguing wrinkle that I noticed yesterday when I was reading the Tua Tonga Vailoa weekly press tran uh, press conference transcript. He didn't see Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed last year. Right. He missed both of those games right. due to injury. Yeah. So this is a new wrinkle. You got Gardner. You got Reed. You got Tyreek Hill. You got Jalen Waddle. How's that going to work? How are they going to defend them? The Dolphins don't know. I don't expect an offensive explosion from the Dolphins, but it's not going to take much. Remember the Raiders-Dolphins game, Raiders-Jets game, excuse me, from a couple of weeks ago when Tony Dungy said from the game site that Robert Sala told him, it's a race to 20, and it's like, what are they going to play, three games tonight? Nobody's getting 20 points tonight. The Dolphins will get their 20, and the Jets have no freaking chance of getting 20. Yeah, that's right. I got 20 to 10, and I think 10 is being charitable. I agree. Instead of Thanksgiving, I'm giving the Jets 10 points. I'm giving I Brees this... Hall a break one run that'll get them down yeah. there close or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And th th this is, oh, I'm on the spread. Oh, crap. All right, give me, uh, give me 21 to 10 then. 21 to 10, Dolphins over the Jets. Did you pick 21? You did I picked 24 10. 10. 24 yeah. 10. Right. I Same got 21 you, 10. Though. Dolphins cover. And yeah, we'll, we'll give them 10 points. And and this will send the Jets to 4 and 7. And we're getting closer and closer to the point where whatever Aaron Rodgers does, whatever comeback he thinks he's going to have, it's not going to matter. He was talking yesterday on McAfee's show about, well, you know, there were teams in the past that were 4 and 6 that turned it around and made it to the playoffs. This team is not it. 
This team is in the process of crumbling, not building. And with Tim Boyle, Tim Boyle, I'm sorry, but Tim Boyle, they're not going to turn it around. They're not going to hold it together for Aaron Rodgers to come back and save the day. Yeah, I, I agreed. Uh, I mean, I, I don't look at it as something that realistically is going to happen. You know, I admire Rodgers and his, you know, ability to want to rehab and break records here for the Achilles rehab, you know, all time uh, quickness, whatever. But uh, yeah, I think at the end of the day, by the time it comes time to practice football, they're going to be out of the conversation. All right, Sunday, early game, Saints-Falcons both coming off of their bye. NFC South basically comes down to one of those two teams. The Bucks have a chance to come up on the outside, but Saints-Falcons, a game with real meaning as to who will host potentially that game against the Cowboys or the Eagles in the wild card round. Falcons favored by one. They're going back to Desmond Ritter. Saints are coming in. We haven't seen the injury report yet for Derek Carr. Remember, he had the concussion. He had the shoulder. We'll see the injury report on Wednesday. We're going to have to kind of make our guess on whether or not Carr is going to be back. But Saints and Falcons, Falcons favored by one, over under a 42. Who you got? Yeah, I, you know, the Derek Carr factor, I, I don't know if it really affects me. It doesn't. You know, I, I look at it and go, well, if they have Derek Carr, right, they might be a hair more efficient, but they'll be less dangerous, right? Because he'll, he'll be a little too conservative and check the ball down. If they have Jameis Winston, they'll be ultra aggressive, right? He'll be ultra aggressive, which could also be dangerous or, you know, yeah, and he's not going to check it down and be as conservative as much. So they could be dangerous as far as if Jameis Winston's playing, they could be more explosive, but it also could be more interceptions for, for the Atlanta Falcons as well. Uh, the Desmond Ritter get back to it. Hopefully he took a deep breath, reevaluated himself, and looks like a different guy here this week. Uh, that, that's what I'm hoping for. The Falcons have not run the ball as well as they, I think we all expected them to this year. Right? They got to find a way to get that going a little bit more on a con consistent, dominant basis. They were more dominant running the football last year, it felt like, than this year. I'm expecting a better Desmond Ritter. There's a reason they named him the starter You know, to start the season. They like him. You know, They think he can handle situations like the one he was just in and not bat an eye and come back in and play some football. I don't know. There's a part of me here where I just think, by week, I trust Arthur Smith and that coaching staff uh, and that group of guys more than than Dennis Allen and that group. That offense is underwhelming, as we talked about. Michael Thomas done. I don't think it's very creative. I think Derek Carr banged up does add to him being even more conservative. And it's a Saints defense that is a little bit overrated and has feasted on you know some not so good offenses in football. There, I'm going to go with the Falcons in this one. All right, I'm going to go 20 to 17 yes. Falcons winning this. Yes. I'm going Saints 24-20. I, I think the Saints are the better team. The Saints have shown it more often than the Falcons have. The Falcons are just kind of struggling to hit a rhythm. I think not playing last week, you know, for a lot of teams, you get a benefit of the buy. I think they needed to keep going. I think they need to keep moving. Going back to Desmond Ritter is not the answer. It's not like Taylor Heineke came in and did incredibly well. Also, he had that hamstring injury against the Cardinals. I just think the Falcons are in the process of falling apart, and the Saints recognize they still have a chance to win the division, keep Dennis Allen around. Every once in a while, you get this idea that maybe he's on the hot seat. They win the division, he gets another year. Yeah. They keep building in the right direction. And if they win that division... And you have to go to the Superdome. You know, it's, it's, it reminds me of when the Saints had to go to Seattle all those years ago for the Beastquake game, when the Seahawks were sub-500 and the Saints were the defending Super Bowl champions and they lost. And it wasn't the better team won. It was the home team in that game is going to win. I don't know if the Saints are good enough to knock off the Eagles or the Cowboys at home in the Superdome, but I wouldn't want to go in there and find out. And I think the Saints have a chance to win that division and host that wild card game and see what happens. So I'll take 24-20 Saints over the Falcons, regardless of whether it's Derek Carr or Jameis Winston at quarterback. All right, the Steelers going to Cincinnati with a new offensive coordinator or possibly two offensive coordinators, but the same offense, the same players, the same quarterback in Kenny Pickett, who maybe isn't the answer, but they're going against the Bengals with Jake Browning in for Joe Burrow, who's out for the year with that wrist injury. See, uh, Steelers are favored by one with an over-under of 34 and a half. Do the Steelers get back on the right track after bottoming out against the Browns, Chris? Well, it, it certainly helps that Joe Burrow's not playing. I mean, that's, that's a huge thing. It, it, it makes the game more of a Steelers type of football game you know, now with the current situation at, at quarterback for the Bengals. 
Now, you know, I, I, you know, it's, 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 it's the Bengals. I think here's the big thing. You know, can they, can the, the backup quarterback Browning, can he, can he deliver the ball to these receivers on a consistent enough basis to take advantage of that Steelers secondary? I think that's the way I kind of look at the football game. And it's not easy, of course. I mean, you know, Cincinnati, yes, has gotten better at pass protection, right? But they're going to play a conservative brand of football. I would expect them to try to run the football a little bit more and do things that, that way as well. But I just think Joe Burrow is so responsible for the things that make them so good on that side of the ball. The quick, decisive decisions, moving people with his eyes, all that, the pinpoint accuracy. You know, I, I just don't expect to see that as much from the Bengals. I think they hang around. They make a play or two, make it tough, right? But I think the Steelers changing offensive coordinators actually gives them a little bit of an advantage. There'll probably be a few new wrinkles or things they do that the Bengals won't be prepared for, right? I just look at this one as, yeah, the Pittsburgh offense makes a few plays in the game. The Bengals have let up a lot of big plays. You've heard me say that a bunch all year long. And I think the Steelers will make a few play, let alone they'll get a strip sack or intercept Browning once or twice too. I'm going Steelers 17-13 in this one. I think it's an ugly Steeler type of football game. Boy, I was hoping you were going to take the Bengals. I've got the Steelers 17-10. We have way too many similarities. In I don't think it's crazy, games, but though. You know, like this, this is one of those right. where like one crazy play by the Bengals, Pickett gets strip sack fumbled. All of a sudden you go, whoa, the Bengals might pull off the upset here, right? I, that, that's what's, you know, we know that. I'm not breaking news here. The, the Steelers can lose to just about anybody because of the style of football they play. The challenge is, as they break in the new offensive coordinators of Mike Sullivan and I can't, Eddie, I can't even remember the, I can't remember the name. Of the, I was, I, we just talked about this on PFT Live earlier. I'm blanking on the running backs coach who's the co-offensive coordinator now. But whoever it is coming up with the play designs, Eddie Faulkner, thank you. Thank you, Pete. Better late than never, Pete. Uh, Pete, you're supposed to save me, as you can tell. I'm struggling as I'm sinking in the quicksand. You didn't even throw me a rope until I was. I didn't throw you one up. either because anyway, I was blanking as anyway, well. Anyway, well, because you, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> it's one thing to say we've got a better plan. Okay, are your players good enough to implement the plan? That's the real test. That's why I say to the Steelers fans who have been saying fire Canada all season long, be careful what you wish for, because it may just be that the players aren't good enough. It may be that the quarterback's not good enough. That may be the problem. So we're going to find out. I think they can hold it together and get this win. If if the Bengals had Burrow, though, I'd be picking the Bengals to win this game. Agreed. I would not think the Steelers Agreed. can pull off their horseshoe, shamrock, whatever else up their butt they have magic in Cincinnati against Joe Burrow, but they can do it against Jake Browning. All right. Ooh, this, this is yeah. the game of the day. For the AFC South Championship, quite possibly, even though it's still Thanksgiving weekend, the Jaguars at the Texans. Jaguars are favored by a point and a half. The Texans won in Jacksonville in week three by 20 points. And if the Texans win this one and complete the sweep, they'll have the same record, and the Texans will technically be in first place. And all they have to do is hold on, and they win the division. Jaguars, one and a half point favorite on the road with an over-under of 48 and a half. Do the Texans complete the sweep, Chris, and take over first place in the AFC South with six games left? Uh, it's going to be an exciting football game. I, I, I do think uh, I'm with you in that this is, you know, yeah, it's 1 p.m., but it's one of the best games of the day on Sunday. You know, it's two quarterbacks that we know can make a, a ton of plays. It's two offenses that can make a ton of plays. You know, it's two defenses that, you know, are, are pretty damn good, got some playmakers, but also have shown you know, that they'll let up some plays too. That's where the game can be fun. Yeah, Houston won that first matchup in Jacksonville. The score is a little misleading. You know, there were some mistakes by Jacksonville where you go, that's kind of self-inflicted, right? They had a tight end the, by the Houston Texans return a kickoff, if you remember, during that game. It was a little bit crazy, right, uh, altogether. I, listen, I love everything that Houston's doing. I do. 
Uh, I think that Jacksonville, having a look at the 49ers defense a few weeks ago, seeing what the Bengals and the Bucks did to the Houston Texans defense a little bit, I think Jacksonville is going to make some plays on the Houston defense. I do. Now, vice versa, I think C.J. Stroud and company, especially the way they're running the ball lately, they're going to make some plays as well. Now, Jacksonville's got some big people up front. You know, I would think they can go all in on start stopping the run. Tyson Campbell, his health at the corner position out there, where's that at? Because I think he's going to have to be put on an island to a degree if they're going to be, you know, be able to to uh, shut down some of the aggressive play action passing attack by the Houston Texans. I've gone back and forth in this one, but I'm going to go with the Jaguars. I'm going to go with the Jaguars and the team that I've seen playing pretty damn good football for the most part for over a year, and a Houston team that I feel like, hey, this is this is new to them. Whoa, NFC South, we got a chance, AFC South, excuse me, chance to win the division, whatever else here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ride the Jaguars 27-24 in a fun football game. I think that the last time around, the Texans kind of caught the Jaguars napping. I think the Jaguars thought, like the rest of us did, this is an easy win. The Texans are the one team in the AFC that has no chance. And the Jaguars found out the hard way that the Texans are still a pretty damn formidable team. And they're working their way back toward being relevant every single year. This time around, the Jaguars are fully alert. And Chris, I keep going back to the lessons learned by the Jacksonville Jaguars in getting the crap kicked out of them by the 49ers. Yeah, you like and that, we right? We saw what they were able to do the next week. Yeah. They, they, they pulled a 49er on the Titans. They didn't crumble. They they won by 20, and it was it was like the one game in the 1 o'clock window that wasn't close. I think the Jaguars understand this is where we're trying to go. This is what we're trying to be. Last year, the game that was the catalyst for them was the loss to the Broncos in London. This year, I think the catalyst, in hindsight, is going to be the loss to the 49ers at home, and it's going to propel them. And I think they win 20-17. to 17. It'll be close. But I think they win. They're ready to go grab that brass ring. They still have a shot at the one seed. Yeah. And their schedule is not daunting down the stretch. Although they do, they do, they do have. So there's going to be some good Jaguars games. I think they have the Ravens and the Browns on the schedule coming up. But they're in position with five teams currently who have three losses in the AFC. They're in position to compete for the one seed. So this delivers the division as a practical matter and keeps them in the hunt to be the top seed in the AFC playoff field. Yeah, it's uh, the Jags have the type of talent to be a number one seed, right? It's, it's uh, still a young team. We can't forget that, right? And you heard me say a little on Monday, they, got a, they have a little too many st like stale points in a football game on the offensive side of the ball where I'd love to see Press Taylor and Doug Peterson just come up with, you know, a handful of we're going to shot plays, game plan. We think if we call this at the right moment, it can be, you know, they got a nice system. They can be surgical. It's at times it's the big plays to open up the field to take everything off their offense a little bit that I feel like they lack. You know, their big plays are, oh, it's one on one with Calvin Ridley. Let me take a shot down the field here. Or, you know, a screen from Travis ATN or something like that. You know, I'd like to see a few more dialed up that way. I think it'll help their offense. It'll be interesting to see. I can't wait for this game. This will be fun. All right, let's move on to the next game on the one o'clock slate, Sunday, week 12. Buccaneers at the Colts. The Colts are favored by two and a half over the Bucs. I mean, the Bucs had given us some promise, but they've hit some rough times lately. They they weren't going to beat the 49ers last week, but they did kind of keep it closer than we thought it was going to be. Colts favored two and a half, over under 44. The Colts are five and five. They've got a shot to steal one of the wild card spots. Can they get another win to get to the right side of 500? Chris? Yeah, I mean, and Tampa's not out of this. We know that. The NFC South. So there's some real relevancy here in this football game. There's some competitive stuff. You know, I think that this is where, well, you know, the, the Bucks offense has been playing better. You know, B Baker Mayfield, the passing game, they're explosive. And when they get going, they can rip off chunks of yards in a hurry with Baker's big right arm and Mike Evans and Godwin. You know, they got a little something there for sure, right? And this is an Indianapolis Colts defense that, yeah, I don't think a whole lot of. I don't. 
You know, I think it suits the the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I expect them to be able to move the ball on the Indianapolis Colts defense. Now, the other side of the story, and this is where it's very interesting. You know, I love Shane Steichen. I do like their offense. Right? It is still predicated on they put you in a lot of tough spots because Shane Steichen is very good in the run game. They're very creative. They got a good O line, and we know they got good backs. But the Tampa can stop the run. That's the one the one thing I feel confident in. Now, they let up some plays in the pass game. That's a problem with them, for sure. And I think they're going to be minus, you know, uh, their, their left corner, Jamal Dean, there. So that could be an issue as well. But I don't know if I feel like the Colts can take advantage uh, necessarily of what might be there to be had in the pass game with the Tampa defense. I, I don't know what's taking me here. This is a close game. It's a coin flip game. I'm going to go with Tampa on the road, okay, pulling this one off. I, I There's just something about I, I look at their offense and think they're going to make plays against that Colts defense, and then the Colts, because I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball, I think it's going to cause some issues for their football team altogether. I'm going to go 24-20 bucks. Usually I get very happy when you disagree with me on this one, I'm a little nervous because I'm going Colts and I've got it 23, 20 and I could see this one go either way. Yeah, I really could with the bucks. You never know what you're going to get. Baker Mayfield has been better than people realize this year. At times they've had defensive lapses. They could have beaten the Texans a couple of weeks ago, but for the fact that they gave the Texans a ball back with 46 seconds left and the Texans drove down the field and won the game. But you know, the Colts at home, and they're kind of on house money. Nobody expected them to contend without Anthony Richardson. And here they are at five and five. This is an opportunity. This is a great opportunity. But the Bucks are probably more desperate right now. Nobody expects anything out of the Colts. And everything is expected out of the Bucks in a weak division, the weakest in football. And I think there's some heat on Todd Bowles right now. I've talked about this whole possibility of Bill Belichick to the Bucks next year. Surely Bowles is aware of the stakes of not making the playoffs this season. But I just – this is a pasta and meatballs, and, and maybe it's just, you know, uh, egg noodles and ketchup like some schmuck. But I'll go 23-20, Colts over the Buccaneers. All right, Patriots at the Giants. This is a game that once upon a time was must-see TV. Now it's must-look away for the Patriots and the Giants, two of the worst teams in football. Patriots a three-point favorite. We don't know who's going to play quarterback. Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, Will Greer, Tony Eason, Steve Grogan, Jim Plunkett. I don't know. Lowest over under the week at 33 and a half. Who you got? It's another one where, you know, it's the, the, the Giants, I feel like, are still fighting and playing for something, right? The and, and not necessarily, I know they're not playing for any spot in the playoffs, but you know, they're still fighting. There's still an edge about their football team. They showed that last week. You know, I don't think they're packing it in to go, oh, we want better draft picks or anything like that. And I don't want to see that as a Giants fan. You get on the football field, you play to win the damn game. That's what I want to see. We'll worry about draft picks later. All right. So that's the way I feel about it. The the Patriots. I don't. There's a. It, it just feels like it's all going downhill. It's dysfunctional. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going on at quarterback and the way they're handling it. I think is a bunch of BS, really. And and nor do I think it really matters. I mean, we're, we're still evaluating the quarterback position, right? You know, as the week goes on here, we still don't know. Oh no, it's Will Greer or Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi. Who the f cares? It's going to be the same shitty offense. It doesn't matter. You're not tricking anybody. All right. I there, I I you know what? I mean, I honestly think the Patriots. If it was Mac Jones, I feel like I'd probably pick them to win by a field goal or something like that. I know there's something that feels wrong about the Patriots. I'm going to take the Giants. I think the Giants got more playmakers. I think they're playing with more energy and and just and, and more physicality on both sides of the ball right now. With Saquon, DeVito got going a little last week, all of that, right? I'm going to go Giants 16-13 winning the football game. I don't know why. It's kind of a little bit of a gut feeling, but I'm going G-Men. I'm going with the Patriots in this one, 14 to 10. I just think that coming off of their bye, two weeks to regroup, reconfigure, 
figure things out. I mean, look, they're two and eight. There aren't many other opportunities that you look at on the schedule and say, this is one the Patriots should win. This is one they could win. Bill Belichick's got to get whatever wins he can. He's trying to put them in the bank because wherever he lands next year, he's going to keep chasing Don Shula. He's going to be one game closer for every win he can steal down the stretch. If they're ever going to win another game this year, it's this one. I don't know that they go back to Mac Jones. I don't know who's going to play quarterback. I think they'll put together enough, and Belichick knows enough of Brian Dayball from their time together to maybe have an edge there. Maybe they can stymie Tommy DeVito. So they see some of the stuff that happened last week against the commanders. Maybe they won't step into those traps. There were some game plan type things that busted that open, that 40-yard touchdown pass. We talked about that earlier in the week. That was set up by runs to the left, runs to the left, and then they do play action, and boom, the guy gets lost in the coverage. The Patriots likely will avoid that. I still wonder if the players are on board. Yeah, that's I'm gonna what guess I worry they about. Are. They're yep. playing for their own futures. I think the Patriots win this one, but they may not win another one the rest of the way. All right, Panthers at the Titans. Tennessee looked bad last week against the Jaguars. The Panthers have looked bad all year. Tennessee's favored by three and a half, over under 36 and a half. Who you got? Yeah, it, it's a it's a game I look at. I know t- Titans are favored by three and a half, and I go, if there's another game here on the schedule, a little bit like you were talking with New England, uh, the, if the Panthers want to steal one, this be, could be one they could steal. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, again, the Titans defense is not special. I do think Bryce Young and company will be able to move the ball on them a little bit here, right? I, of course, they're they're never gonna just you know uh, reinvent the wheel with the talent they have there, you know. But the formula and style, and they're playing low scoring defensive football games. The Panthers, this is one they could steal, but I still think this is Titans Mike Vrabel type of football here, and I just don't have enough faith in the Panthers offense to make enough plays against the Titans defense. I think that's what I look at, and I think the fact that I do think the Titans will be able to run the ball on the Panthers just enough here that it'll get them the win. I'm going to go Titans winning the football game, but I'm going to have the Panthers covering the spread. I'm going to go 19-17 Titans. Ooh, ooh, a little needle thread here. I've got the Titans 24-13. I feel like the dysfunction in Carolina is taking root, and it all flows back to David Tepper, the owner of the team. Jay Glazer reported on Sunday that that Frank Reich's seat is the hottest in the NFL right now, and that's pretty hot when you consider some of the other hot seats out there. Yeah. I think Tepper can't help himself. He's too involved in the team. Good luck hiring a good head coach who has options elsewhere if you fire Frank Reich because people are not going to want to work for David Tepper. He's too involved. He's too driven. He's too... He holds on too tight. He wants to will his way to a relevant team, and it's making it worse, not better, and it's going to continue. I think it's too much pressure, too much stress. Panthers are crumbling. Titans will get a win. It's a pride game for them. There aren't many wins left on the schedule for them, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not Mike Vrabel wants to tap out when the season ends. All right, we tap out just for a couple of minutes. When we return, we'll take a look at the Sunday late afternoon games, including the Buffalo Bills trying to upset and upend the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll do that next here on Chris Sims Unbuttoned and PFT. I will not do this read in the Chris Sims Sunday, Sunday, Sunday voice. I'll do it in my normal voice. I should actually play it on my recorder. Don't forget on DraftKings Sportsbook this season, new customers can bet $5 and pocket $150 in bonus bets instantly, plus all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code PFTLIVE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. For a second there, I had flashbacks to those commercials from the 80s with the guy who was doing the Federal Express commercial, and he spoke really fast. I think we've talked about that before, because I, I don't know if you remember that, but there were commercials where there was this guy who could talk really fast. And yeah. It was, they did it over and over and over again. He became like a C-list celebrity back in the 80s because he was the guy who could talk really well, fast. Well, he was the Micro Machines guy, right? There was a commercial when I was growing up. I think it was the same guy we're talking about, right? He could... He would talk about micro machines, and I mean, he was amazing. But they, you, you could talk that fast, and I can still understand what you were saying, right? I don't know what the hell his name was, talk fast guy, but yep, I'll, I'll never forget his voice. <laughs> All right, well, uh, don't forget to sign up and use the promo code PFT Live, uh, yada yada yada, and off we go. Sunday late afternoon games. The LA Rams four and six swept the Seahawks. Going to see the Cardinals. Kyler Murray is back. The Rams are one of these teams. Shereen and I were looking at the back half of the PFT Power Rankings today, and I asked her, give me a team from the bottom 16 that you think could maybe get hot down the stretch. Mine was the Rams. At 4-6, and six, they've got Matthew Stafford. 
He's healthy for now. They've got Aaron Donald. Yeah, Cooper Cup's a little banged up. He's got the low ankle sprain. Puka Nakua's been great. The Rams could be a team that, you know, all they got to do is catch the Seahawks, and the Seahawks have these four tough games coming up, 49ers, Cowboys, 49ers, Eagles. The Rams can slip into the seventh seed. This is an opportunity. If they blow this one, forget it. This is one where they can go to Arizona and handle a team that they have handled over and over again over the re- the years that Sean McVay was there. One point favorite is the Rams, 44 and a half over under who you got. Yeah, well, the one thing we've seen from the Rams over the years when it comes to Kyler Murray is they have the team speed to kind of contain him, right? And I don't think that's any different in this year. They're not as good on defense as maybe in years past when they were, you know, making Super Bowl runs or all that, but they're still a handful on the defensive side of the ball. They are fast as hell, and they're extremely well coached. They're creative, you know, and it's, it's again, I like that offense there with Arizona. You know, I think Kyler Murray's still feeling his way a little bit as we saw last week. There's moments of, ooh, that looks good, and then there's some moments of, okay, he's still getting back on track and knocking some rust off and getting used to the system altogether. I do think this is going to be a close football game. I do. I think the really the biggest advantage I look at more than anything is just the fact that the Rams are playing for something and the Cardinals aren't. You know, I think that's that, that sways in, in the you know the the pendulum in the favor of the Rams a little bit. The Rams offense, you know, the combination of Puka Nakua and you know Cooper Cup. Where did you do we know where he's at? I know it's a sprained ankle. Is he definitely out? Did you say that definitively? I'm sorry. Low ankle sprain. Yeah. we don't know yet. We and don't the problem know yet. Is we're doing all of this. We're doing all of this before we even see the the Wednesday injury. Yeah, report. right. Okay, I know. And I, we saw the injury happen. He got stepped on the back of his foot basically on a run play, and it was just your traditional roll of the ankle, but we know he's had some issues down there. And it, it does make me think differently if he's not in the football game. But I think the other thing I look at that's positive is I think the Rams will be able to run the ball on the Cardinals a little bit. And when the Rams can run a little bit, that's when McVay becomes very dangerous with Stafford. I'm going to take the Rams to win this close football game. I'm going to go 23-20 Rams. I've got 27-24 Rams over the Cardinals. Look, it's been encouraging to see what Kyler Murray has done. This is the best of both worlds for the Cardinals. We see that Kyler Murray is back. And they're not winning games. Now, they did beat the Falcons, but the best way to land this plane is for Kyler Murray to reestablish himself, stay healthy, they lose games, they have a high draft pick, and then they can decide after the season what we're going to do. And it won't be an easy decision. Do we keep Kyler Murray? Do we trade Kyler Murray? Do we take Caleb Williams? Do we take Drake May? What do we do? But there's a point. I say the same thing about the Bears. If your quarterback is playing well, there's a chance that new lottery ticket you scratch off isn't going to be a winner. Look at Bryce Young versus C.J. Stroud so far. So it's it's going to be a difficult call, but they may be set up perfectly to make what would be a tough decision. And I think this loss to the Rams gets them closer toward that point where they'll have high pick, Murray's looking good, and they figure out what they're going to do moving on. All right, we move on to Browns at Broncos. The Browns on a two-game West Coast string kind of. Denver and then L.A., they're going to stay out there all week. I think that's great for their bonding late season. And it's great for Dorian Thompson-Robinson to face a defense that isn't the Pittsburgh Steelers. Two-and-a-half-point favorites are the Broncos against the Browns. Is that right? The Broncos are favored by two-and-a-half against the Browns? The Browns isn't the Browns anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give you my pick for this one now. I see this one. I see the Browns being underdogs on the road with that defense, the best in football. When you look at how the Broncos have struggled to score touchdowns, We saw it last week. They were field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal. They finally got the touchdown at the end of the game. I think the Browns are going to put the clamps on the Broncos' offense. I got 17-9. to I mean, if if Dorian Thompson-Robinson can lead the Browns to 13 against the Steelers, he can score 17 against the Broncos, and the Browns can really put the brakes on the Denver offense. And I think the Browns are feeling it now. I think that win over the Steelers, for as much as it hurt Pittsburgh, it elevates the Browns. As you've said, Chris, it's the best defense in football. I agree with you. Dorian Thompson-Robinson, a guy that shouldn't have lasted as long as he did in the draft. I think this is a great spot for the Browns to get to 8-3 and three and stay very much alive for the number one seed in the AFC. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's on the road. I guess they're seeing it's a rookie quarterback on the road against a team that's hot and playing good. They probably look at it like, 
Russell Wilson and Sean Payton will have a good game plan for the Browns D. I'm guessing that's why it is that way. We know the Broncos D has certainly been better, right? But I'm with you. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed. I, I thought you were going to take the Broncos cheese in this one. I really did. You know, and so I was hoping you would it would go that way. But but I have a lot of the same thoughts as you. I think here's the first thing. One, the Browns should be able to run the ball on the Broncos. The 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 Broncos are not a good run stopping defense. And now you're you're playing one of the best run run offenses in football. I think that's a clear advantage. And I think it's beneficial to DTR on the road. Of course, there it's it's like you said, it's not the Steelers. They get the run game going, boots and little easy play action passes for a rookie quarterback. It'll be the perfect combination. Uh, so I like that aspect of what the Browns offense looks versus against the Broncos defense. You know, the Broncos offense has been better. We know that. Russell's making a little magic every game. They are consistent with the run game. But I just look at it and go, well, they're, not, they're not like blowing up the scoreboard there in Denver. I'm not ready to sit here and go, oh, they're going to move the ball up and down the field on the best D in football who can match up with them on man-to-man -man on the outside and load the box and do all that stuff and blitz and get after that average offensive line the Broncos have. So I'm with you there. I'm going Browns 19-13. I think they win on the road and continue this ugly style of winning football games. All right, the next game, the Kansas City Chiefs go to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders. The Raiders want more Las Vegas fans there. They want the black hole to be a thing. You know, it's destination. The team's who are visiting, bring their fans with them, and the Chiefs will probably have plenty of folks wearing red at Allegiant Stadium on Sunday. And the Chiefs need this when they're eight and a half point favorites, 43.5 over under. I've picked the Chiefs to win every game this season. So let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and okay. continue to pick the Chiefs to win. But I'm not picking them to cover. I'm going to go Chiefs 20 to 13. My guess is they'll score their 20 points in the first half and then hold on to their butts for the second half and hold off. The Raiders, thanks to that defense, which is very good. Bend but don't break. It finally broke against the Eagles. But but these are the Raiders. And I give them credit with Antonio Pierce. They're going to hang around. They're going to make it interesting. I think they're going to cover the spread, but they're not going to get the win. The Chiefs need this one too badly. They're still, they're still deep in the thick of the race for the one seed, and they've never played a playoff game away from home with Patrick Mahomes as their quarterback. I think they continue on that track. Yeah, I, I, I hear you there. I, you know – I mean, I'm concerned. You've heard my concerns with the Chiefs' offense. I mean, again, I think it lacks a little creativity, and I think that's what bothers me. That's where Eric Bieniemy's offense did have a few more answers and wrinkles to it. The other night, though, I mean, I certainly can't blame Matt Nagy. You blame the receiver's hands more than anything. Guys were open. And I think the thing I was so impressed with with the Chiefs against the Eagles on, on Monday night was, I mean – I've never seen a team move the, the Eagles' defensive line the way the Chiefs did in the run game. That, that to me, was, like, unbelievable. You know, it makes me think about them a little different. There is a silver lining there a little bit to their offensive performance, even though with that, the Raiders' defense have been a pain in the butt, and I'm not still ready to sit here and go, oh, the Kansas City Chiefs are ready to take off on that side of the football. All right, I'm obviously picking them to win. The other aspect of this, I'm going to pick them to cover the spread. It's just I go, yeah, I don't have faith in the Raiders' offense, and I think this is a game where the Chiefs' defense sets the, Ra the Chiefs' offense up for a few short fields, if not score some points themselves against the rookie quarterback and company here. So I'm going Chiefs 27-13, and not a beautiful 14-point win. It's probably ugly. That's the way I think the Chiefs are going to look all year long, but they cover the spread and get the, uh, get the convincing win on the road. All right, the last game in the late afternoon window, Sunday week 12, the Buffalo Bills at the Philadelphia Eagles. The Bills got on the right track post-Ken Dorsey with the big win over the Jets, but it's a far different experience to go to Philadelphia and take on the Eagles where the Eagles strengthened their grip on the top spot in the NFL, at least for now, with that win over the Chiefs. Eagles are favored by 3.5 with an over-under of 48.5, and according to DraftKings, 80% of the spread money is on... The Buffalo Bills. Chris, are you on the Buffalo Bills? You know, I am on Buffalo Bills to cover the spread. I, I, I am. One, I, uh, listen, it's, it's a desperation football game for them. Eagles coming off. It's short week. We just beat the Super Bowl champs. We're feeling good. I can see all that playing into this a little bit as well, right? You know, I do think 
Uh, the Eagles, we know how talented they are on offense, but uh, they miss Shane Steichen. They're not nearly as complicated or creative on the offensive side of the ball. I look at this one as where Sean McDermott's going to be able to break them down a little bit and cause some problems. I do. Not that I think it's going to be like, oh, wow, they're going to run over the Eagles, but I think they'll do some stuff that we'll see some stale moments from the Eagles just like we saw on Monday night versus the Chiefs. I think I add that on top of – you know, the Bills can protect pretty damn well Josh Allen, and I think they can have a intermediate to short passing attack that's going to give the Eagles some problems. I do. As we saw, the Chiefs got some people open. I think the, the Bills will get some people open as well. Eagles win this football game, but I think the Bills hang around. I wouldn't be shocked if the Bills were winning kind of midway through the fourth quarter, but I think the size, the talent, the physicality of the Eagles – fourth quarter will wear them down I'm gonna go Eagles 24-21 so you've got the Bills covering by a half yeah. point I'm uh, gonna go Eagles 28-21 I just think that the Eagles will emerge from Monday night's game with an extra layer of confidence I think the Bills still recognize that that things are shaky and beating the Jets who are not good right now is not the kind of thing that reestablishes the confidence now if they win this game you feel differently about the Bills. But they're in this stretch of Eagles, bye week, Chiefs, Cowboys. It's going to be tough for the Bills. And I think that that the momentum gets stalled out considerably because the Eagles are just, they are just, you know, they, they, they can out-muscle pretty much anyone except maybe the 49ers if the 49ers are healthy. That whole thing, and I think it's so underrated, the fact that they can take the 10 yards and shrink it to nine is a tremendous advantage for the Philadelphia Eagles. Tremendous. And I think it's going to be the difference maker in a lot of games this year. I think it has been, and I think it will be. So I like the Eagles to win 28-21. to Let's take a break. Primetime games, including Sunday night's Ravens-Chargers, when PFTPM and Chris Sims unbutton continue right after this. Don't forget, on DraftKings Sportsbook this season, new customers can get can bet $5 and pocket 150 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code UNBUTTON when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Damn, I didn't even make you smile you on that one, huh? Damn. You done? Are yeah. you done? Yeah. Are you done? Yeah. All right. Nah. Um, I I I'm used to it now. You need to you need to give me a different twist. Okay. I'm used to it. All right. I'll All come right. up with something new next. Here week. we go. All right. Here we go. Sunday night football. Ravens at the Chargers. Ravens three and a half point favorites. That seems a little odd to me. The Chargers are a hot mess right now. Brandon Staley, uh, feeling the heat. Doesn't want to be asked any more questions about whether or not he's going to call the defensive plays. I hope they ask him after the game whether he's going to keep calling defensive plays. Over under 47, Chris, do you have the Ravens or the Chargers? And if so, who covers this? Well, I mean, like, who do I have? Like, what the f***? Who the f*** would pick the Chargers against the Ravens, okay? <laughs> I mean, holy shit. I'm with you. I looked at this and went three and a half. I, just, I don't know. What what happened? Did the Ravens go on a crystal meth binge? And, and is that what they're expecting this week? Oh, God. I mean, what the f***? would definitely affect the line. I, I would think so. That would definitely affect know. the Do line. they know something yeah. we don't? I mean, I, I, just, I just look at it and go, well, yeah, go ahead. What? You know what they may know? What? They may know more about Lamar Jackson's ankle than we do. Well, maybe. That's, that's true. That is true. And we'll see where that goes. And we don't know sitting here on a Wednesday. But I look at it and go, even if his ankle isn't 100%, as long as he plays the game, I don't see any way this shitty-ass Chargers defense stops the Ravens offense. What? I mean, when the Ravens can do, oh, wait, we can run the ball at will. We can throw the ball at will. We can tie it all together. Like, the Chargers defense has no fucking chance against this Ravens offense. Zero. All right? They're going to get steamrolled. And then I look at the other side of the ball where I do look at it and go, hey, the Chargers protect. They're pretty good in that way. They have a short passing game that might be able to, you know, have a little success against some of the blitz zones against the Ravens. But ultimately, it's just too much on that side of the ball, too. I think this is a dominant Ravens win. I'm going to go 34-20 Ravens on Sunday Night Football. Yeah, look, I see what's coming now. We're all going to pick the Ravens on Football Night in America. The Chargers are going to win, and we're going to get mocked in the next awesome schedule release video that the Chargers do next year. But 
I'm willing to go out on a limb. I'm not. I already took the bullet once this year, taking the Bears against the Chargers. I'm not taking the Chargers against the Ravens. I'm going to take the Ravens 24 to 17, and it probably will be worse than that. I, I think the Ravens right now are one of the best teams in the AFC. They're currently the one seed by a half game. They are not going to loosen their grip on that against a team like the Chargers, which seems to be falling apart. Monday Night Football, the Bears at my Vikings. Three and a half point favorites. They're breaking out the Bud Grant throwback jerseys over under a 43. I'm going first. I'm taking the Vikings in this one. The Vikings going into their bye week, that late week 13 bye. They need the win to get to seven and five and set themselves up for a playoff run. The Bears kind of emptied the tank against the Lions, and the Vikings handled Justin Fields pretty well when they were playing the game in, what was it, late October when Fields got injured. I think the Vikings handle this one. The it's not the dome anymore. The The stadium with the slanted roof will be rocking. Don't go and knock. And 34-21, the Vikings win. I don't think Justin Jefferson will be back. I don't think it matters. This is going to be Vikings roll at home going into their bye on Monday night and get closer and closer to a playoff berth, Chris. Yeah, I think this is an interesting football game. I do. I, you know, one, the Bears defense has been better lately. They're a pain in the butt. They're not going to give Dobbs easy throws. He's going to, you know, we saw at the end of the football game, Dobbs isn't the best at throwing the ball into tight windows. You know, there's a reason, again, that I'll say he's been a backup for so long. Uh, and uh, the Bears, they, they at, at points will go overboard on how they load the box to stop the run, right? I, I don't know why. I'm, this is one of those games I looked at and I felt upset. And I look at the Bears and with Justin Fields, I think they're going to run the ball a little bit on the Vikings. And I think Justin Fields and his his right arm are going in the right direction. I'm picking the upset that that last week's game is a letdown for your Vikings football team. 23-20, okay? Bears pull the offset. Ooh, eat crap. Here we go, Bears. Let's go. All right, good. I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you did it. I can't wait for next Tuesday morning, assuming you work next Tuesday morning, although you won't be. All no. right, we'll take a break. Best bets and Folsom Prison Blues picks next here on Chris Sims Unbuttoned at BFTPM. All right, Chris Sims Unbuttoned, PFTPM. It is best bets time for week 12. The games, other than the Thanksgiving Day games, are in play. Chris, give me your first one. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Dolphins on Black Friday. I know it's minus 10, but I just look at it and go, I have no faith in the Jets' offense. I don't care who's at quarterback. I think this Dolphins' defense is getting better, and I think they're just going to slowly wear down the Jets' football team. Plus, Miami mistakes last week. I think they'll be on their P's and Q's, dot their I's, cross their T's. They'll play better. It's a Jets defense that'll allow them to hang for a little bit. But I'm going to go to the Dolphins to cover that one. Give me the Browns getting two and a half in Denver. That's a no-brainer. That's a what-the-hell-am-I-missing type of a pick. Browns are going to win that game getting two and a half points, Chris. Okay, I like, your, I like where your head is there. I'm going to go with the uh, – I thought about that one. Um, uh, I'm just scared of the rookie on the road. I think that's what scares me. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Uh, I know the Chiefs are getting, what is it, eight and a half at the Raiders. I think their defense stifles this Raiders offense. I think it's basic. Spagnuolo will break it down. I think Mahomes and company make enough plays. It's a good Chiefs uh, Raiders defense, but not a great one. I like the Chiefs to cover the spread. I have them winning 27-13. I'm going to Sunday night with the Ravens only giving three and a half points to the Chargers. I feel like the Chargers are falling apart. The Ravens are at a spot where they can really put the pedal to the metal and try to be the one seed. Give me the Ravens. I will second that. I'm going with the Ravens as well. I mean, three and a half is too little. I think they just are a total mismatch for the Chargers football team. I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm going back to Denver. I'm taking the under. Wow. 35. Give me the under 35 in Denver. That's too high. Look at look at last week. Look at the two games last week. 43 points, I think, something like that was the was the or 40 41 points in in uh, Denver, Minnesota. All right, give me your Folsom Prison Blues pick. Who's your team? You know, it's a weird no week. What. I'm gonna pick the the Dolphins over the Jets. I'll take the Chiefs. Give me the Chiefs. Hail to the Chiefs. Bye. See ya. Yo, yo, what up, homies? Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to Chris Sims on Button. Right now, we got Sunday Pod, right? So you can have it Monday morning. We recap all the action. Wednesday, it's the What the F***. 
Happened podcast. We're going to get deep in the weeds on the key matchups of the week. And then Thursday, I'm picking games with that jerk Florio. So you know where to find us, homies. Keep watching. Peace out. We'll see you.